y'all. Welcome back to my channel. We are back to do the review for Freaknik, y'all. This is the wildest party never told. And look here, I know it's a little bit late, but that's all right. I'm still giving it to you and you're still going to watch it. Oh, Anyways, though, y'all, um, before we get into it, y'all already know what to do. Make sure you thumbs it up on the way um, in here. Share me out if you care and all that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel and all that stuff. All right, y'all, look. So let's go ahead and get into this review for it. I must say, like everybody else, I was super excited for this docu-series to come, or documentary to come out on the Freak Nick. Um, I grew up, well, I wouldn't say I grew up. Well, yeah, I grew up in the era of Freak Nick, okay, when it got popping and big around, like, to where I wanted to go to it. I was already getting ready to be out of high school, so I first heard about Freak Nick when I was, like, 13, 14 years old like right in junior high. And us being from Texas, you know, being from the South, that was like a, a, a big thing that we all heard about, right? One thing I will say about the documentary, I'm very glad that it was nothing like people thought it was going to be. Because I'm one of them people, I'm one of them people too. I thought it was going to be ass shaking, busting open, don't stop, pop that, pop that, let me see you do the breath. That used to be my shit. I ain't gonna lie. But when I tell you, I used to be scrubbing the ground. Scrubbing the ground. Don't stop. Pop that pussy. Let me see you doodle brown. Tootsie roll and all that, bitch. You can tell me nothing on my soul. You can tell me nothing, okay? So, I am glad that this documentary showed the history of Freak Nick what it was, what its intention was, the history of it, how it got to be as big as it is, and ultimately what led to its demise, and the the, the spinoffs that came from that. Because again, us being in Texas, the spinoff that we had from Freaknik was Kappa Beach Party. And more specifically here in Austin, our spinoff was Texas Relays. Okay, Texas Relay Weekend, matter of fact, it's getting ready to come up. Now, Relay Weekend ain't like how it used to be, much like Y'all hear my son in there on that game. I told the nigga to be not, 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 not to be too loud. See, he got me stuttering because he got my nerves back because I just told him not to be too loud, but he in here loud as hell. Anyway, so, like I said, our spinoff was Texas Relays. It was always the weekend, like, right? On the Easter weekend. And it used, it used to be bumping. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to let y'all know about how... Um, how we used to do it out here in Texas, baby, okay? But let's go ahead and get to the documentary, okay? Now, Freak Nick originally started in 1982. It was in Spelman College, okay? It originally was just a picnic, okay, with just a few friends. That following year in 83 was when there was an actual party, a Freak Nick party, okay? But again, it was just like a picnic around that, uh, around that time. There's a group with a lot of y'all young as this watching this. Y'all don't know nothing about it and go ahead and Google it, ticky tocky it and all that. It was this group called Chic, okay? And they had this song called Freak, okay? It was Freak Out. How? Let's Chic, they freak. Freak Out. You got to go look that up. That's where Freak came from, okay? And it was Freak Nick, N-I-C, like the picnic, okay? It was supposed to be like an old to, to the Chic, okay? You know, like I said, that was like the, the big song that was out then. So it was supposed to be like a freak Nick, not not freaky deaky, okay? That shit didn't come till later. But when it first started, like I said, the party was in 83. And it was literally, and the reason why it was started is because all the kids that were going to college in Atlanta, whether it was Clark Atlanta, Spelman, Morehouse, um, what's all the other? They got some, all the black colleges there. They wouldn't, um, they couldn't afford to go home for spring break. So it was just a way for everybody that was still left on campus, all the black folks that was left on campus to be able to have a weekend where they can have fun. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't have a lot of money. Not They couldn't afford to go home, of course. So they just basically got all the means that they had together. Somebody was on a hot dog. Somebody else was on a hamburger. Somebody bought the chips. Somebody bought the cold drink. Somebody bought the, the, the paper plate. Somebody bought the napkin. Somebody was going to do the DJ. Like it was just a way for the black college students to be able to have something fun, something fun to do over spring break weekend, right? 
over spring break the week. And again, it started, now the founders of the actual Freak Nick itself um, that were in the documentary, Sharon Tomer, Monique Tolliver, Emma Horton, and Amadi Boone. I think there was like one or two more gentlemen. I'm not sure if I didn't get their names, but they were the original founders of the original Freak Nick, okay? F-R-E-A-K-N-I-C, okay? When it was an actual picnic, okay? But once niggas got to nigging, y'all already know what the hell that means, right? So, um, like I said, they just got gatherings and different shit from around the community and stuff. People was donating to it, and it was a picnic, you know what I mean? And essentially, over time, it grew, it got bigger, it got bigger, because as the word gets out, again, niggas is going to start nigging. Y'all already know how it is. We can't have shit. A lot of times we are our own worst goddamn enemies. We can't have shit. So this, um, as it got bigger and like I said, it started to grow, the word got out. Like it was worldwide. People knew about it. They had references on a different world. They had referenced it on school days. And again, any youngest that I got that is listening to me right now, a movie you need to go check out is School Days. Not D-A-Y-S, School Days, D-A-Z-E, okay? That movie right there in a different world were the two reasons that I had to go to an HBCU. I just knew that my HBCU experience was going to be the exact same as what I seen on a different world and what I seen in school days. Bitch, I wanted to go and be a part of Gamma Phi Gamma, and I wanted to be... Um, Go on this way, see if I have good of a hair. That was all on school days. I wanted to be a part of that. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold you. When I got to college, okay, it was a little bit of a culture shock for me. Y'all know I'm blacker than black. I'm black, black on black, blacky black, black as ever, ever, ever. I'm black. But <laughs> I wasn't that fucking black. And I got a culture shock on my motherfucking ass, okay? Granted, the high school that I went to, I went to like a predominantly black and brown junior high. Um, high school, it was predominantly white, but we still had us a good mix of black and brown up in there. Like we was all up in that thing. We was cool and all of that. But when I got to college and it wasn't black folks, it was niggas. I wasn't ready for that shit. <laughs> okay. I ain't gonna lie. Like I said, I ain't gonna hold you. I was too busy trying to fit in. I was too busy trying to impress and try to impress a bunch of bitches that didn't like me any fucking way, had their own fucking issues. And and it just was not what I thought it was gonna be. Now, granted, when I went to Paul Quinn the following year, Paul Quinn was cool. Okay, Paul Quinn was cool. But just college life in general was not for me. I ain't like living with other bitches. I ain't like the food. I ain't like being that far away from my mama. I ain't like living with other bitches. I mean, I ain't no no tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. It just wasn't for me, though. My second roommate at Paul Quinn, she was good. But that first bitch at Texas College, bitch go to hell. Lord forgive me, but bitch go to hell. Anyway, so, so... Like I said, a different world in school days was a big influence on me as to why I wanted to go to an HBCU. But like I said, bitch, wake up. Now, some of the legends that were part of this documentary as well, we got Lil John, Uncle Lou, Goody Ma, CeeLo Green, Rashida. Okay, I rap like Johnny Low. Too short. You cannot have anything Atlanta, especially Atlanta, the, the black folks base, if you don't have the key essentials to Atlanta, which would, again, be Lil John. Okay, goddamn, who did I say? Jermaine Derpy. Hello, Jermaine Derpy. Okay, Dupree. I know how to say his motherfucking name. Check your mom, not me. Killer Mike was in there, 21 Savage, um, Mark Lamont Hill, Eric Sermon, Jalen Jalen Rose was one I was not expecting to see y'all up in there. And then, did you see what you call a husband was on there? Cecil from, what is that, Married to Medicine? Dr. Jackie? Cecil was in one of them pictures, and I thought that was him when I had seen it. And then I had to go back and rewind it. I said, bitch, I don't like Cecil. And then I had seen on one of the blogs, he had came out and said, yeah, that was me. Uh-huh, nigga. And what? No Dr. Jackie nowhere around. That ain't my motherfucking business, though, bitch. 
much. But it started off good. It was a good time had by all, like I said. And it was how it used to be back in the day. Okay, you would get in your car. Y'all would pile up in there. Ain't nobody had no whole lot of money for nothing. So you get about five, six of y'all. Y'all all chip in money. You rent a car. You rent a hotel room. Bitch, we all finna squeeze up in this car. Bitch, we all finna squeeze up in this hotel. Two finna sleep on a bed, maybe three sleeping in this bed, but it's finna be a double bed. And if there's a couch, somebody gonna sleep on a couch. You all chipped in on gas. You all chipped in on food. All of that. It was fun. Now, I'm talking like I was there at the freak Nick. As I'm talking about this, I'm thinking of how it was Kappa Beach and Texas Relays. That's how it was. And, and quite honestly, it's a spinoff of the freak Nick anyway. It was all the same. Watching this documentary was so nostalgic for me because it brought back the memories of when me and my homegirls would go down to Kappa Beach party. And Kappa Beach, it's in Galveston. And Galveston is like, like three and a half, four hours from here in Austin. So the same, we would rent a car. All of us is chipping in on a car. We all chipping in on uh, the gas. We all chipping in on a hotel. We buy a bunch of food and snacks on the way there. When we get down there, just because we were some bad bitches, like we was somebody finna buy a bitch a drink. Somebody finna buy a bitch some hot wings after the club or a good chop sandwich or something. <laughs> what Denzel Washington say, I leave, I'm from around the way, bitch. I'm leaving out of here with something. Very much so something, okay? And it was just a good ass time. Yes, we were booty shaking. We wasn't coochie popping and we was not wearing coochie cutters. But like they showed in the documentary, let me tell you, we would have our little guest shorts on, our little Jabo shorts on. I was a guest girl. I love me some guest beach with the little collar shirt and our K-Swiss. Now, what we did here in Texas, okay, yeah, they had Air Max and Nollies, but which we was K-Swiss girls down here, all white, looking godly, bitch. I'm telling you, that's how you did it. Your outfit wasn't fresh enough. If you ain't have no white case with song, bloop, and it would be fun as hell. Yes, we had the big ass earrings. My homegirl would do me a little old nasty French roll, bitch, with a swoop the doop or a little crimp. Or if she was really feeling fancy, bitch, her finger away, but she didn't want no finger away because it was hot. You know what I'm saying? But, bitch, when I tell you, <laughs> dookie braids was dookie ing, okay? <laughs> Dookie braids with Dookie Ing. Oh, I used to like her wear my braids. That girl that was in a gin and juice video. I think it was a gin and juice video with um Snoop Dogg. How she had them braids. It was like a ponytail part right here and the rest was down. And they was Dookie braids. Yup, that was me. <laughs> that was me. But it used to be fun. Just like how they were showing in the dot. You and your people. And that's when niggas were respectful. Okay. Yes, you had your little shorts on. You didn't have your ass out. You might have a little cleavage, maybe a little, little stomach showing. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Legs out for damn show. But niggas would take a picture and they'd be like, hey, sexy, what's going on? Hey, red shirt, I see you. Shit like that. That's how it used to be. And like how they said in the doctor, it wasn't no fucking phones. If anything, niggas had camcorders because they was recording the girls. We had our camcorders because we was recording them niggas. Just like how they said in the doc, you want to come up, you talking about, can I, ooh, let me see, nigga, let me see, put your dick out, put your dick out right now, I'll give you a bag of Funyuns. Put your dick out right now, nigga, I'll give you some Doritos. Like, <laughs> we was picking and choosing, I'm just saying, but it was fun. It was so goddamn fun watching this document. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I watched it like three times just because it was taking me back. It was taking me back to my little bopper days. Yeah, I was a little, I was a little bopper, but I'm saying God <laughs> grabbed me. Even though I am divorced and I'm ready to slay this pussy, but that's neither here nor there. Just know that God <laughs> got me. Okay. Anyway, so. Niggas would take a picture or you would take a picture with them and just keep it moving. You have about 5,100 numbers in your in your pocket by the rest of the night because we was writing phone numbers down, bitch. 
we was like, you got some pen? You make sure you got some paper with you. All right, girl, make sure you got this because we already knew either I'm going to be handing out my number or I'm going to be getting numbers because we was just that girls. It was just like that. Again, it started off fun, but niggas got to be real damn disrespectful. Now, around um, 94, that's when Jermaine Dupree bought Uncle Luke to the shit, okay? Because Jermaine, once Jermaine Dupree got into to the whole um, got their freak neck thing, Jermaine brought the artist to it. Because at first, it was just a picnic. It was just a big-ass party. There were no, like, specific things going on. It was just a party. Jermaine Dupree bought the artist down, okay? He brought, what was that? Goody Mob was out hustling their tape. Outcast would hustle their tape. You know, all that. Well, then, goddamn, Uncle Luke, don't stop, pop that, pop that. Let me see you do the brown. I want to walk, I want to walk, I, 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 I want to rock right now, okay? Once he came down, that's when... The niggas kind of sort of lost their goddamn mind. Females too. We ain't just all gonna put it on these niggas. Females too, okay? Because we already know Uncle Luke was the king of sex, okay? The king of before there was a, even a bus at pussy open. There was an Uncle Luke. Don't stop. Pop that, okay? Before there was a bend it, bend it over. Let me see what you got. It was a, <laughs> it was a doodle brown. I'm just saying, Luke ran so these hoes could walk. I'm just saying, respectfully. Once he came and the men started to see that women were a lot free, women were getting a lot more liberated, you know, having fun with the, the, the sexuality and shit like that. Men started to get real goddamn ridiculous and real goddamn disrespectful. It went from Hey, sexy, how you doing or whatnot? Taking a little picture to them grabbing on you. I have been to Kappa Beach parties and niggas, you are walking past with your homegirls and nigga will come and grab you and God forbid you turn his ass down because a respectful nigga be like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But once it starts to get disrespectful, it went from Hey, beautiful. How you doing? What's up? Can I get you? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I will fuck you then. Big lip, dirty, flip, flop, crocodile looking ass, bunion back ass bitch. It's like, whoa. Whoa. I was just beautiful. Now I'm a bunion back? Nigga, what? It was wild. It was goddamn wild. Niggas was getting goddamn disrespectful out of anywhere. And then it went from just having the college kids there. So now you got all these goddamn old heads like Uncle Luke. Let's just keep it real. Uncle Luke made it okay for these old niggas to come down here and just start groping and touching and tugging and shit. I'm just saying, that's just my opinion. Uncle Luke cracked the door open and a lot of these old heads just walked their ass on goddamn through. Now, I will say... It was my, my, my mom and dad and them generation that came down and ruined it for the rest of everybody else because it was just supposed to be for the college kids, all right? By the time I graduated high school in 98, nigga, that was on my bucket list. I knew I was going to goddamn Kappa Beach. But to what? Nigga, I started doing crunches and squats and shit. Like my last year, getting ready to crack. Because, bitch, I knew I was going to go to Kappa Beach. Give me a little two-piece thing. Kill them hoes. I know I was. But the one thing that I do remember hearing was y'all go down to Kappa Beach, y'all better be careful because they dangerous down there. Them niggas be done snatch you up and snatch you clean out your clothes. You, by the time you notice it, you ain't got nothing but one braid hair in your goddamn head. Bitches, you better be careful. That's what we heard about that. So again, like I said, I was geeked up to go. By the time I graduated from high school, but then when I heard, oh, no, bitch, they're going to steal your drawers, I was like, okay, yeah, no. Okay, oh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we ain't going to goddamn do that shit. Now, by the time 96 came around, Atlanta won um, the, the was it, the Olympic Committee thing, whatever. In 96, the Olympics were coming to Atlanta. So, of course, what white folks want to do, what was once 
I'm just going to let them do Now, again, it started off small and it really did get big. It got overwhelming. It got so big to where the city couldn't even handle all the people that were coming in. And now you got the Olympics getting ready to come. White folks weren't going to have all you niggas taking over the city like that. So what they do, they started to make it harder and harder as the time leading up to the Olympics came to where around that time, you ain't going to want to go there no goddamn way. What would be an easy route. Why wouldn't you say an easy route? You're on the highway. The highway is moving. It might be full of traffic, but the, the traffic is going, right? Now Atlanta has set up all these barricades to where you're on the highway. You know you're going to take 12th Street exit right here because you're going to hit the block and the club going to be over here. Now you can't do that because this exit is closed. All right, bet. Not a problem. I'm just going to go on up to the 7th Street and I'm going to just go ahead and take that exit right there and then back door up Riverside and I can take that. Now, nah, bitch, that's closed off too. The city was literally rerouting people miles from where they had to be in order to cut down on traffic, okay? Businesses were closing at a point in time because they either knew all these niggas is going to come and it's going to be a goddamn problem or vice versa. Businesses were open, but because the city was doing all this rerouting, nobody could get to the businesses to actually spend any money or do anything. But then again, like I say, niggas got here and niggas started nigging. Hotels weren't trying to rent to black folks restaurants weren't trying to serve no black folks nobody no businesses were trying to be open because they knew once the goddamn freak nick get here y'all niggas is gonna be wild and like i said around this time is when atlanta is getting ready to prepare for the olympics to come in 96. so we got this guy named george hawthorne he was a part um in 98 he started what was called i'm sorry was it 98 Anyways, George Hawthorne, he basically tried to change, well, not really change the name of it from being Freak Nick. I believe he tried to change it to like Black College Week, something like that. But the name didn't really stick, right? So come 99, George Hawthorne and the mayor is basically, well, George Hawthorne basically goes to the mayor and he wants to cancel Freak Nick altogether. Again, like I said, this was in 99, 98, when I graduated high school, that's when I heard, bitch, you better be careful. Because when they're going to take your draw, as soon as you get on that motherfucking island, bitch, they're going to script your ass, okay? So that's when it was basically looking bad for Freak Nick then, okay? Come 99, George Hawthorne did what he had to do. He went to the mayor, and he was like, "Now nah, we just need how I'm going to shut this shit down, which, quite honestly, that was one of the best things to do, only because what Freak Nick originally started and how it ended or what it became was not the intention at all whatsoever. It went from being Le Chic, Le Freak, Picnic, N-I-C, to Freaky Deaky, N-I-K. Niggas just out there nigging. It was no longer safe for females. So really, they didn't have no other choice but to close it down. Okay? And then, like I said... From there, at least here in Texas, well, just in general, there were so many spinoffs from Freak Nick. Like you had like um, Black, what was it? Black Bike Week, Daytona Beach, again, Capital Beach Party, Texas Relays. Like there's so many different spinoffs in different cities and stuff like that that stemmed all from Freak Nick. Now, again, here in Texas, we had the Capital Beach Party. I want to say the Capital Beach Party started around... Around 98, 99 is when it started. And again, I'm, I, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure if it actually started here in Texas, but it was the Kappa fraternity that, again, they start, They had a, um, a, a weekend, same thing, sort of a spring break thing, and it started off like a picnic, and then it just sort of grew from there. And it came down here to Galveston. Again, y'all, if y'all in the comments and y'all know, let me know, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't believe it actually started here in Texas, but eventually it came here to Texas at Galveston Beach. Kappa Beach Party used to be the shit, bitch, you can tell. Who Kappa Beach Party used to be the bomb? But again, used to be fun. You could go rent you a little Kia, uh, uh, what was it, a little tracker. You could rent you a little Mustang convertible or something, have your little outfit, be cute. No coochie cutters because we weren't about that life. But we did pass us some Daisy Dukes, bitch. We had us some Duke and Dukes, bitch. You could tell us that. 
And you be in a car, and yeah, I had my little camcorder too. Okay, I was there, bro. And you will just have a fun ass time, bitch, going nowhere because the traffic would be so bad. Literally, you will go and pull up at the Chevron somewhere and will be there for the rest of the night. Have about 50 of them 100 niggas numbers in your pockets before the night is over. Be drunk in a motherfucker because you just done went to the store. Y'all done drunk MD 2020 and Thunderbird and goddamn Bones Farm. And it was a good ass goddamn time. Here in Austin, more specifically, which they don't do it so much anymore. Then again, I'm 43. I don't get out there in the streets like that no more. We had Texas Relay Weekends. Now, what Texas Relay Weekends was, it was a big-ass track meet that take place here in Austin. Now, the relays still happen every year. I want to say the relays are getting ready to come up. But everybody, all the colleges would come because it was this big-ass track meet that would take place at UT, University of Texas in Austin, down um, at Dishfog Field. And celebrities around the world would come here. That was a time. Let me tell you something what you would do each. The weekend before, you would go and get your outfits ready for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You had to have four outfits. Now, if you couldn't, if you weren't doing nothing on Thursday, bitch, you for sure had an outfit for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? But let me tell you, you go and you and already got your hair done, okay? You don't already, like I said, picked out what outfit it is you're going to wear, okay? You don't know what party it is you're going to, but bitch, you know, wherever you go, it's going to be packed elbow to asshole, okay? Niggas is going to be out there choosing. Bitches is going to be out there choosing. You get in the car and literally you go to the club, the club. You can't even dance in that bitch. You like this because it's a pack. Oh, was like, yeah. you with your drink like this because you can't even move. Ah, hey. It used to be a bitch. It used to be so fucking fun. I'm talking about leave up at the club sweaty and ready, bitch. And if it was a, if you really had fun in the club, you found you a little something, something to do grown folks stuff with, you know what I'm saying? Touch on your little thing or whatnot. And that was just on Friday, right? Now, mind you, you still have Saturday and Sunday, right? So then Saturday, you do all over again. You get up, go to the mall. We will go to Highland Mall here and bitch, the mall will be packed. Once again, you trying to walk, get through the mall. Bitch, I'm trying to get the champs over there. All right, bitch, we y'all finna go. Y'all finna go to Foot Locker? All right, we gonna be over here. We'll meet y'all in the food court over there by the pizza place, bitch. Okay, and if I don't see y'all over there by the pizza port, at, by the pizza place in the food court, meet me downstairs where they take the button pictures at. Right there. So you spend, and mind you, you go to the mall to buy an outfit to wear that night, but any other time, it's gonna take you about maybe two, three hours. But bitch, when you at the, at the mall for Texas Relay Weekend, bitch, you get there at around 4, 5 o'clock. Mile closes at 9. Mile closes at 9. The parking lot is packed, bitch. I'm talking about the police have to come close the fucking parking lot down. So the, club, the, the mile closes at 9. You in a parking lot at least to 10, 30, 11 o'clock, sometimes 12, okay, 12 o'clock. You go straight from there. You probably go back to the house some real quick. Shit, shower, shave, roll up your little something, something, get you a little drink in your red cup. And then you finna go to the club, bitch. Now, by now, it's already like 12 o'clock, 12, 12, 30, right? But it's, it's just starting. It's just now getting ready to start, though. It, it was already starting, but it's just ready to get like crunk, crunk, right? So you go to the club. If you even able to make it into the club because it was that goddamn packed, if you don't get into the club, Bitch, I ain't none, because guess what? The party outside of the club is even more lit than the party inside the club, bitch. So you outside the club and you party, you doing your thing. Ah, ah, club closed at 2 o'clock. That don't mean shit, because we in the parking lot to at least 3, 4 o'clock. Okay? 
And then once you leave from the club, then you go to the gas station and you go to the gas station that was over there off of Springdale and um, Ed Bluestein, where it's a Jack in the Box over there. And you be hanging out at the Jack in the Box. It was Jack in the Box for 24 hours. You go in there, get you some egg rolls, some sweet and sour sauce, bitch. Or you get you a ham and turkey panini with the extra cheese on it. And you be sitting out there parking lot pimping. And if you didn't go to the Jack in the Box that was over there off of Springdale and um, Ed Bluestein, then you go over there to Capitol Plaza. Capital Plaza, because it's a big ass Capital Plaza, so you just park a lot of people over there at the Capital Plaza, bitch. <laughs> I'm saying we had options. Or go right back over there to Holla Mall and just be chilling in the park lot over there, okay? If you're not over there, then you're going to go to Illusions out here over on Pflugerville off of um, Wells Branch, and you're going to chill over there at Illusions. Like, there, we had options. Or you can go on the east side. You can go over there and chill at like Chester's. Chester's one number, but as big as my bedroom, but I tell you, be 1,119,000 and one niggas out there, and it used to be so fucking fun. It used to be so fun. Again, until niggas start nigging. Niggas start nigging, and it got fucking ignorant. You will be out on 6th Street. If you've been to Texas, you've been to Austin before, you all know how 6th Street is. 6th Street is literally, it's, it's downtown. It's like the party central, right? For the youngins or the college kids. And it's a street and it's nothing but bars all up and down the street. It would be so, it looked like a fucking million man march about that bitch. And then somebody will start shooting. And then guess what? It's a stampede. I remember mean, one time, me and my homegirl Katrina, shout out to my bitch Trina. That's been my bitch for the longest. We was out there at Texas Relays one weekend, one weekend down on 6th Street, right? What we used to do, we would always make sure we were not in the middle of the street. We was on the sidewalk somewhere, just in case you got to take off running, bitch. We are on we on the sidewalk, so we finna hide out some goddamn where. Child, our stupid ass in the middle of the street. They got to stampede. <laughs> It ain't funny. They got the stampede and they knocked my home girl Trina over, bitch. <laughs> and bitch on the ground trying to pick up her stuff out of her purse. I'm like, bitch, come on, bitch, we gotta go. I'm trying to grab her and shit. She trying to grab us in the purse. <laughs> that shit was funny than a motherfucker. She could have died, Monique. That shit ain't funny, but it was funny than a motherfucker. <laughs> we were dying laughing afterwards. But again, niggas is nigging. And they eventually, you know, they they started to do the same thing here. They would reroute you to where you think you're going downtown to get to Illusions or our Empire. And nope, 7th Street exit is closed. Can't go through there. Nope, 6th through 15th Street is closed. Can't go there. Go to Riverside. Nope, Riverside is closed. You can't go there. Bitch, you got to go all the way down to Old Torf. Take Old Torf to Congress. Try to ride your ass back up to Congress, but then they still got them goddamn blocked off. So you can't get around to nothing. It just got to the point to where it was not even worth going out anymore because the traffic was so terrible. You spending three, four hours just trying to get to somewhere that would typically take you about 15, 20 minutes to get to. It wasn't fucking worth it. And again, I got to the point to where I kind of sort of aged out of it. Um, it was just, it was, it was a good time. It was a fun time. I wish that it was something that could have gone on for forever to where my son could know it and enjoy it. But again, it just got too out of hand. It got too dangerous. And niggas got to nigga. And it's unfortunate. It's very, very, very unfortunate. Now, in 2022, 21 Savage, he did sort of like a redo part. I believe it was his birthday, and he did the theme of it as Kappa Beach. Um, I'm sorry, not Kappa Beach. He did the theme of it as Freaknik, of course, because you know he's from Atlanta. And so I thought it was a cute little party that he had. I would have loved to go to that just because I know that it just the whole nostalgia of it all. Listen, I'm an 80s baby, and the 90s and the early 2000s was like the best for me. If you didn't get to live that era, sorry for you. Y'all just don't know. It used to be so fun. Now, the Freaknik Festival, the, it's a more mature thing. Um, I can't remember who the guy's name was. He said that he had... Um, T-Pain was the last one that owned the rights to the name Freaknik. You remember when he had that um, cartoon that used to be on Cartoon Network? I don't know if y'all watched it or not. It was pretty funny, though. Um, and so this guy went and bought basically um, the, the name Freaknik. And so he is now doing that. I believe he said it started in 2019. And it's basically, it's more mature type shit. Like, they got vendors there. And 
some holistic and education, probably got some knock chopper incense in that bitch, you know, selling herbal life or something, you know, mature black stuff, like what we need anyway, you know what I'm saying? But excuse me, I'm not my mic over. But damn sure not the freaking nigga like it used to be back in the day. Again, I appreciate how they made the documentary. They gave you the history of it. They gave you the what, the why, the where, and it was nothing like how we expected it to be. Now, don't get me wrong. They did show a little booty shake and a little ass shaking. Matter of fact, Uncle Luke and two of the producers from the documentary, they were on The Breakfast Club, and they were saying that um, when it was supposed to come out a while ago, they didn't have all the footage, and so basically they put a blast out and was like, any freaknik footage that you have, please send it in to me. So all the footage that y'all seen in the documentary were people that had sent in, you know, like their old footage of it or whatnot. And it was good. I definitely liked it. I enjoyed it only because I was I was old enough to appreciate that. Again, I was not at Freaknik itself, but I was damn sure at Capitol Beach and I was for goddamn show. Sure in Texas relays up and down these streets every goddamn year until <laughs> I was about like 26, 27. That's neither here nor there. But it was good. If you did not watch, if you did not watch the documentary, you definitely should. Again, don't go in with the expectations that you're gonna see your mama or your auntie or even your daddy out there sexually harass somebody. But be be ready to hear the education behind it. And like I said, the, the what and the why. And I appreciated that so, so, so very much. Now, if they come out with a... I would love to see a Kappa Beach um, documentary, although I doubt they do. I doubt if they were to do something like that. Hold on. Diddy, so, bitch, Diddy going to jail, jail. Bitch, did he go into big boy jail? My phone has been blowing the hell up. Did he so revoke to a mystery man? Ain't no left. Bitch, did he down for? Did he go into jail, jail? I'm sorry. I need to get caught up on this because I just seen this that popped up. Um, Storm Monroe is going live. Shout out to Storm. All right, so I'm going to get up out of here. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this review of Freak Nick. If you have not watched the documentary, like I said, please watch it. It was really, really good. I enjoyed it. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know what to do. Drop it down in the comments and please let me know. I appreciate y'all so much for coming through and I will see y'all next time. Bye.